Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to get an SPI screen uh, running at 60 frames a second from a Raspberry Pi so that we can use it with RetroPi to play games. In order to achieve these seemingly impossible frame rates over SPI, I'll be using the FBCP-ILI9341 library by Juj, it's J -U -J, uh, and I'm extremely thankful to him, not only for having written this library, but it's also so well documented. Uh, before you attempt to do this yourself, I strongly recommend reading through the README file on his GitHub page, which I've linked in the description below. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, uh, one of these cheap wireless controllers, along with this 2-inch uh, TFT from Adafruit. Now, it turns out that using this particular screen made it far more complicated than it uh, needed to be. Most displays that use the ST7789 driver are 240x240 240 resolution, but this one is 320x240, and so we'll actually need to make some changes to the FBCP ILI9341 library to make this work. If you have any other screen, you probably have, won't have to make these changes, and uh, so you can just skip that part of the video. The build options for getting your screen working will differ from mine, but hopefully you can get some idea on how to do this. I'll begin by assuming that you've set up your uh, set up Raspbian or RetroPi on your SD card, and that you can SSH into your Pi. As we go through this, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. But be warned, I'm no expert on this, and I'm learning along with you guys. Anyway, let's get going. We'll start off by having a look at some of the hardware connections here, and there are quite a few connections that need to be made. Most of these are not negotiable, so the library actually uses the hardware um, SPI zero pins on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, we've got clock um, here, master in, slave out, master out, slave in, and chip enable or chip select. They're predefined, so you can't actually change those. They must go onto pins number 23, 21, 19, and 24. Uh, v in here is just uh, providing 3.3 volts from uh, one of the, the pins on the GPIOs here. You can ignore this purple connection just here. This is simply because I'm using a, a ribbon cable to connect my TFT to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, to save having one pin hanging on its own out here, the VIN pin, I've just left that on the on the ribbon cable there, but I've not actually connected it. These two pins down here, so reset and the data control lines, uh, you can change those. So here I've put the reset on pin 31 and the data control line on pin 29. And if you're going to move those, what you need to do is make sure you look up the Broadcom pin numbers. So if you look at a general Raspberry Pi pin out, it will give you the Raspberry Pi pin numbers, sort of like 24, 31, 29 here. But it'll also give you what's called the BCM pin numbers. So I've got the reset line tied to BCM6, which is GPIO 31, and the data control line uh, on pin 29, which is the Broadcom pin number 5. And that's going to be important a little bit later on. So once you've got that all set up, uh, we need to get on with to the software. Now, as I mentioned before, at this point, you should have your Pi set up with the hardware connections made. Uh, your Pi should be running some kind of dis distribution, whether that's Raspbian, or in my case, I'm actually running RetroPi, because I want to make this into a little games console at some point. Uh, so you need to log in via SSH. Uh, there's plenty of guides on how to set up these various distributions or how to set up SSH. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that here. You can find a uh, tutorials online easily to, to do that. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure uh, CMake is installed. I'm pretty sure it is on this machine, but just to be on the safe side, let's uh, sort that out. Yeah, so we already have the newest version there, so that's good. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to clone the Git repository uh, from the, the library that I've linked in the description below. So if I had to do that, let's clone it in. And we're done. Uh, and then we need to build uh, this software. Now, before we do that, I've actually got a bit of a weird TFT screen here. So this library isn't set up for some reason to deal with uh, 320 by 240 panels that run on the ST7789 uh, driver chip. If yours is in the list, if your, your panel is in the list of uh, tested devices, you can actually skip over the whole of this next bit. I'll put a timestamp uh, on the screen at the moment to show you where to go to. But if, like me, you've got the 320 by 240 um, ST7789 TFT device, uh, then we'll have to make some edits to the, repo uh, the repository before we actually build this software. So to make those edits, uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, change the directory into the one thing we just downloaded. And we need to make some edits to a couple of files here. So if we use nano, 
So seven dot h. So we need to edit st seven seven three five r dot h. We're going to use uh, nano to do that. And uh, what we need to do is we need to scroll down here. We need to find the line that says display native width and display native height. And at the moment they're set to two forty by two forty. Now due to a weird bug in how this uh, LCD actually works, instead of changing the width to three twenty, which would seem correct, we're actually going to change the height to three twenty instead. Now, if you haven't used Nano before, in order to save a file, we use Control O to write the file out and then press Enter. And then we press Control X to exit. Now, there's another file we need to change as well. So this time we're going to change um, st7735r.cpp. So we load that up. And we need to try and find a line. It's down here somewhere. And what we're looking for is this line here where it says SPI transfer 0x37 uh, VSC SAD vertical scroll strap, blah, 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 blah. Now, this has been added in this line um, because most of the LCDs that work on the ST7789 actually only have a, a 240 by 240 part of the screen that can be used. However, this one doesn't. So we need to change this line here. So what I'm going to do is just comment out the line. And let's uh, let's write, write it out again. So the same as before, 0x37. And this time we're going to put um, 0, 0. And don't forget the semicolon at the end of the line just there. And as I say, we have to do this. We have to do this because we don't want to shift the... Um, the display by 80 pixels, which is what's actually happening by default. So we need to make this change. Remember, all of these changes are only necessary if you have the 320 by 240 uh, version of this panel. Oh, I just realized I made a mistake there. That's O, not zero. So it should be SPI transfer, um, open brackets, 0x37, comma zero, comma zero, close brackets, and a semicolon at the end. So again, control O to write that file out and press enter, and then control X to exit. Those of you who have skipped ahead to here, uh, welcome back. We just made a couple of edits to the, the files you can see above ST7735. Uh, as I say, these aren't relevant unless you have this very particular uh, panel. And the next thing we need to do is we need to build this software. So we're in the right directory at the moment. So first of all, we're going to make a directory uh, called build. And then we're going to go into that directory. And then we're actually going to make the software. Now, there are multiple different options we can use. So. This uh, line seems to have worked fairly well for me. I'll just try and explain what each one of these bits means. So first of all, we are going to uh, build this software. So I, my uh, TFT is using a 778, ST7789 driver. So it's going to be dash DST7789 equals on. Uh, and then we can put in which lines we've used for our data control and our reset pin. Now remember, five and six here, these are the BCM or the Broadcom port numbers, not the normal Raspberry Pi port numbers. So we've got TFT data control equals five and TFT reset pin equals six. Then we need, uh, we've got DSPI bus clock divisor equals eight. Now what this does is this determines how quick, how fast um, the SPI bus can push data to the uh, display. When you're doing this for the first time, it might be a good idea to start off with this divisor set a bit higher. Um, it has to be an even number. Uh, a safe number to start off with is maybe 30. And presuming that works, presuming your display responds, you can then start to reduce that. I found a, a value of eight seems to work fairly well with this or well enough with this, uh, this display. Uh, I'm easily getting 60 frames a second on anything I, I need. The final thing here is we've got D statistics equals zero. Now by default, again, when you build this, you actually get a little display on the screen which tells you your frames per second and a few other interesting bits and pieces. Um, you might want to not put this part in for now, but when you finally build it, you probably don't want that display uh, on top of your image. So I'm going to switch that off for the moment. So let's build that. Okay, we're then going to make it. Now, there are a couple of other things we need to do here as well, uh, and one of them is to change the resolution of the output. So by default, what will happen is your, your HDMI port will probably be outputting something like uh, 1080p. Of course, your LCD can't display that. 
So this uh, library will actually downsize it, but of course it won't change the aspect ratio as well. So what we're going to do is force the output into the display ratio or the display settings that our screen can actually take. So to do that, um, we're going to go to, we're going to type in sudo, um, we're going to nano boot uh, config.txt. All we need to do is scroll down here a little bit to this section just here. And we're going to uncomment these lines here. Now, if these lines aren't written exactly as they are here, make sure you, you edit them. So I've put in here 320, 240, and 60. So that's your uh, your width, your height, and your FPS that you're targeting. So make sure that's all written uh, as it is there. And again, like before, Control O to write out the file, and then Control X to escape. We probably also want to start the SPI driver um, every time the Raspberry Pi boots as well. So uh, again, we go to sudo nano. And this time we're going into rc.local. And make sure that before it says exit zero here, you've got this line. So sudo slash home slash pi slash fbcp dash ili 9341 slash build slash blah, 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 blah. And don't forget to put this uh, ampersand at the end as well. That's really important, otherwise it won't work. Again, once you've done that, control O and enter to write the file out and then control X to exit. At this point, you're ready to reboot uh, your Raspberry Pi and see if the screen actually works. So you can see it's booted up into Emulation Station and uh, RetroPie just here. So let's select a game, let's, uh, let's play Sonic and see if this runs. So remember we were trying to get to 60 frames a second here, should be absolutely fine. Sorry about the focus thing here, my uh, camera's not amazing at this. Brilliant, so that all looks pretty smooth. Let's go into the, uh, the demo here a second, see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see it's running pretty well. There's no uh, graphical artifacts. Um, the screen seems to be updating relatively quickly. Um, however, it's not just it's just not Sonic, is it, without the uh, the tune in the background. So let's sort the uh, the sound out. To change the sound output from the HDMI to the 3.5mm headphone jack, quite easy to do. There are a few different ways of doing this. Uh, you type in sudo raspi-config, and if we go down to advanced options and then to audio, we can set it to force 3.5mm headphone jack. Uh, go down to finish, and uh, that should now be set to the 3.5mm jack instead of the HDMI sound output. If your display doesn't work for one reason or another, uh, it's not too hard to re rebuild the, the software. So to do that, we're gonna go into the FPCP directory and we're gonna remove the build folder that we made earlier. We're then gonna make a build folder again, build directory, uh, let's cd into that. And then just like before, we can use the cmake command. Again, just check the, the, the details you've got here. So. Um, first of all, make sure that you've got the right chipset selected. So mine runs on ST7789, so that's correct. Make sure your data control and reset pins are correct. Remember, these need to be the BCM pin numbers or the Broadcom pin numbers, not the Raspberry Pi ones. Um, if you're having issues, maybe when it sort of works, but not quite, then make sure you change your uh, clock divisor here. Um, start with a, a much higher number, 30, 40, 50, something along those lines. It has to be an even number, uh, and try and make that again. Hopefully this will work uh, like it did before. Brilliant, and then let's make that. And once that's done, we can uh, we can reboot and we can try that again. Okay, let's have another go, uh, hopefully with the sound enabled this time. Okay, that's much better. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video or found it useful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you next time.